So today I have Kate, Caitlin Snell in here, who's been working with me since, when did we get, I think we got started in like September, October. It was, I think it was late October of last year. Yeah. So we've been, we started working together about late October of last year. That was back when I was still doing one-on-one -on -one and I didn't have a course at that time. So yeah, so we'll just jump into the interview. I let, first, before getting started, I let Kate just talk a little bit about herself and introduce herself. So so yeah, you can introduce yourself, Kate. Uh, uh, my name is Caitlin Snelling and I am a colored pencil sport portrait artist based out of Kansas City. Um, I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory, so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so, so getting into it first, before we get into details and everything of what's going on, if you don't mind, would you be wanting to explain a little bit about what you had going on like before meeting me? So before we started working together when it comes to your art career. Yeah, so before I started working with you, um, I was not doing very well. <laughs> I was trying to put my work in galleries. I was in a couple galleries here in the Kansas City area. Um, and I had, I actually had my artwork hanging in a couple stores as well, but that wasn't doing anything for me. Uh, a lot of people would see the artwork, but it wasn't going anywhere. And if it did go somewhere, I lost uh, quite a bit of money to the stores that it was hanging in. Um, I think before I met you, I sold like 18 pieces of artwork in 18 months or whatever. And um, like three of those were to my mother-in-law. So uh, <laughs> I don't think that really counts, but I counted it anyway because uh, it was a sale. <laughs> but now, yep. So at that time, I noticed you said you sold 18 pieces in 18 months, including the ones for your mother-in-law. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but talk about the price. And at that point, how were you pricing your artwork? Uh, so I was still kind of trying to find my style and what I was really doing at for a while I did um, acrylic paintings and the most expensive acrylic painting that I sold was five hundred dollars for a 24 by 48 painting it was pretty big and I did not make very much off of it at all um, Typically, a piece would go for one to two hundred, and then I started drawing portraits, and um, I was charging a hundred dollars a subject, and feeling bad about it because I didn't think people would pay a hundred dollars for a drawing. So, uh, yeah, I wasn't charging very much, and I was not making very much at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. I noticed you mentioned that you said you wasn't making very much. And I know it's because some of those sales came through like the galleries that you were in, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to spending up profits, what what were like how what was the percentage split between like those galleries or so and yourself? And then at the end of those sales, how much would you say you would probably be profiting? Okay, so one of the galleries I was in only took 15%, which was super great. Um, and then the other gallery I was in took 30%. Um, I didn't sell very many pieces through the gallery that only took 15%. I think I sold one or two pieces. But after supplies, and then the gallery was kind of far away, so gas money to get to and from the gallery and them taking a cut of it, I think I was profiting like twenty, thirty dollars per painting. Um, the other gallery I only sold one through, and um, they had me price it a little bit higher, but I was still only probably making fifty dollars. I only made like fifty dollars off the painting I sold through them. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> so. And when we first started working together, actually before we started working together, I didn't have nearly as many artists I was working with as I am now. I was working with a few artists. So how did you first come find out about me? You actually found me. Um, yeah. I was on Facebook and I was posting on some like 
post about what's your most what's the most difficult thing about art for you and selling your art and i was like well i'll talk to people and they're interested and then i tell them a price and they stop talking to me and you commented and you were like um well what does your art look like and i posted one of my drawings and you're like uh can you message me <laughs> and i was like sure um so then i started talking to you and we had a phone call and you told me all this super cool sounding stuff and i was extremely skeptical and did not i, did, I don't think i was going to work with you but then i talked to my husband about it and he was like i know that you're really skeptical about it because you're a skeptical person but you want to be an artist and you want your artwork out there and you need to do something to make that happen and this might be that something that you need to do um, to get that to happen so my husband kind of talked me into it and i started working with you like the next day <laughs> so yeah because i actually remember that because i remember on that first call you was like no I'm going to just pass. <laughs> yeah. And then I told my husband about next... it. He was like, he was like, call him back. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and then we got on a phone call again. I remember your husband was actually there. <laughs> yep. And then that's when he the one else like, yeah, definitely do it. Just just do it what you got to lose. <laughs> yep. So at that time, I didn't have like the course and everything like I have now. So for you, and a lot of the artists are going now, they get shocked when I say this, but the way you had to learn from me was just literally over a phone call, and you just had to take as many notes as possible, and then that phone call would hang up, and then that would be it, you yeah. know, into the next phone call. So how was that, like, going through that first week of working with you? Um, it was overwhelming, um, although I'm a really good student, and I take notes constantly over things that you shouldn't even take notes on. So I was it worked for me um but i wrote down a, a bunch of information and then i would come across something that you said would happen and i was like oh he mentioned this and i didn't write it down so i'd text you i'm like okay what am i supposed to do <laughs> and you would walk me through it which was great um but it was i i used the notes that that you had given me over our phone call and didn't believe any of them but still tried yeah. it <laughs> And I ended up, I ended up, I think I made three sales that night, which was huge for me since like, I only made like on average one sale a month. So that was, it was pretty cool. And I kind of believed yeah. you after that, but I'm a, I'm a skeptic and you always told me I had trust issues, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm no. doing well now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So for you, that first week, actually something extremely amazing happened, like you just mentioned, after that very first call. So like that first call, I just, it was an hour long and I just told, I was like, hey, I'm gonna just talk from the start to the finish and you just take notes and at the end, I answer some of your questions that we have some time left over. And then, like you mentioned, you was very nervous at that point. You was like, I don't think none of this stuff will work. And then something crazy happened that same exact night you applied some of the stuff you learned from me and made three sales yep and i so think it was uh i think i ended up making it was three sales and it was one commission and like two orders of print which i had to talk to you about the commission because i didn't know what i was supposed to charge um yeah but it it was surprising to me. And then, I mean, it kind of solidified the fact that I'm skeptical about this, but maybe what he's saying is real. I remember on that first phone call, I was, you were like, what's your goal? And I was like, well, uh, if I could make $1,000 a month, that'd be really cool. And you're like, okay, but what's your real goal? <laughs> and I was like, but that is my real goal. <laughs> you're like, okay, well, we'll start out with that. but my goal for you is going to be like 3000 a month to start out with and then it'll increase um, <laughs> as as it goes along. But and it's been great because I definitely hit that goal every month and surpass that goal every month now. So, yeah. yay. I actually 
actually still tell that story to a lot of like new artists because I still get a lot of artists that say like my goal is a thousand to two thousand. I'll be like, listen, there was one time I got on a call with this amazing lady named Kate. And Kate, when she got that call me, she told me her goal is a thousand bucks. I told her she aiming way too low. I said you need to aim high, you need to aim at about three to four thousand. And she probably thought I was crazy on that call. <laughs> I definitely and I was did. Like, <laughs> I was just like afterwards now she's crushing that goal you know and that's crazy that that's happening so your first day working with me was pretty amazing because you made those three sales but let's talk about like moving past that going into that first month so at the end of that first month when it comes to work with artists I notice it's some type of shift that happens like mentally I guess you could say from before they believe like I don't know if I can make sales and then afterwards when it started happening you your first month ended up being really really good uh my so. first month was, was really good and <laughs> we would get on the phone and at that time you were like well we'll FaceTime the calls um so that I can show you what I mean um on my computer screen or whatever so we would FaceTime and I would have you on my phone and sit at my desk and uh We'd get on the the call and you're like, what's wrong? I was like, um, my face. I was like, you're like, what what's the matter? I was like, I'm a little overwhelmed. There's a lot of stuff going on. I'm not used to I'm not used to all the sales that I'm making and I'm talking to so many people and I was like, and then I had to figure out how to actually send out prints because I wasn't selling things before. So it was really easy to just do one at a time, but then I started selling a lot and I was like, I'm getting a little overwhelmed. So you kept telling me it's okay to step back for a second. It's okay to, it's okay to kind of pull back. Don't stop, but stop trying to run forward or whatever. And <laughs> it was, it got really overwhelming at the very beginning. Um, but then I sort of, figured it out and started going a little more smoothly. I wasn't as panicky all the time. Yeah. And I actually remember that. That was that was like right after your first month, going into that second month, you were just getting a ton of sales and you just like, I don't know what the number and I was, I remember we got on that call and I was ready to dive into more information and you were just like like and I was like, wait, what's what's wrong? So then at that <laughs> point you just I think we decided to take a little break. We a did one or two, so you could catch up on sales. Yeah, we took a break. And I had at that point, I had I'd never had a list, a waiting list for commissions, and I had a waiting list. Uh, it was like early November or late November, I don't know, but I had a waiting list all the way out to March, and um, I was not sure. I was like, I can't. I don't know what to, even to tell the people because I can't keep accepting commissions when. <laughs> I have so much work already on my plate. Um, but then after after we started uh, working together again, after our little break, you were like, you know, you can like kind of narrow down what you do. And before I just did portraits and I would do people's family or whoever they asked me to draw. And then I was like, yeah, I don't want to do I don't want to draw people's family anymore. I just yeah. want to draw athletes. And you're like, well, then draw athletes. And I'm now known as a sport artist and people recognize me as a sport artist. So, and I still make, I probably make more now than I did before um, drawing just anybody. Yeah. And now that you brought that up, that brings up a really good point. So you say now that you make more. So let's talk about actually the price changes you went through. Because I noticed what a lot of artists struggle with is one, finding their prices. And then two, what's more, I guess you could say scary, is raising their prices. And we first started working together. Like you mentioned, you was charging $100 per subject, you know? Yeah. So when we, first, <laughs> yeah, when we first started working together, I got this commission and it was a five person commission like it was five subjects full body and I was talking to you and you were like you need to charge like six hundred dollars for that and I was like that's too much they're not going to want to do it so I ended up charging them four hundred um and regretting it later but I charged them four hundred dollars for a 
16 by 20 colored pencil portrait with five full adults and background <laughs> and everything. When everybody was wearing white. <laughs> yes, everybody was wearing white. Um, yeah. And now, so now I don't do commissions um, unless it's an athlete. And my single subject portraits, I don't do full body anymore. I just do like bust and head. Um, I sell um, 975 is my base price for a, an 11 by 14 single subject right. portrait. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so 975 <laughs> is the base price. Um, but it can go up to, I've sold, um, my most expensive 11 by 14 piece was $1,800. So going from, how was that? Like, how was that feeling of, cause I know it started off as like, how to be like, use, I remember me telling you like, you need to triple or quadruple your prices. And you was like, no, <laughs> no <laughs> said, people okay, let's go slowly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're just like nobody's gonna be buying then we start to slowly going and now you tell me like I just need to sell for 1300 and how was that to like go from selling like you mentioned a 24 by whatever size so something pretty big for 400 now send 11 by 14 for 1800 yeah um it was like pulling teeth on my end because I didn't want to because I didn't think people would buy it um, between you and my husband, you guys were like, raise your prices. Okay, just raise it just a little bit. So slowly I kept raising my prices just a little bit and people would buy them. Um, I think what really solidified it for me was um, I had a drawing that I was working on and I posted just a picture of the eyes done. Nothing else was drawn yet. It was just the eyes and I posted that and I had four or five people reach out to me and they were like, um, I want to buy this. How much is it? And my husband was like, there are a lot of people interested in this. So tell them, tell them a thousand. And then I talked to you and I was like, he says I should do a thousand, but um, I don't know what to do. And you were like, well, if it makes you feel better, say 975, because when it's 975, people don't think it's as much as a thousand. So I was like, okay. So I told people 975 and one of the people bought it that night with just the eyes drawn and nothing else. And I was like, <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> that was crazy. I, Cause you kept telling me someone's gonna sell or you're gonna start selling art before it's finished. And I was yeah, like, I know you you're not, crazy. <laughs> you're a crazy person, <laughs> but okay. But I did. And um, since then I've sold several pieces before they're anywhere close to being done and while sometimes people are like okay that's a bit out of my price range but I'm definitely interested in a print um, I've never had someone say that's ridiculous why would you charge that much for your work most of the time people are like it's worth every cent like it's totally worth that much money I just can't buy it right now um, which I think it's great because they're not yeah. saying my my worth my work's not worth it. They're saying it's worth it. Um, and I just find another buyer. So. Yeah. So now, if you don't mind me asking, what would you say your probably your biggest might have been so far financially? My biggest, so far is actually this month. Um, and this month is not over yet. Uh, yeah. Um, I, two weeks ago, made about $3,000 in just prints. Um, I sold a ton of prints in like a week and it was like $3,000. And on top of that, I made a sale of one of my originals. Um, so I think I've sold two originals this week. And then I had that one gigantic week of print sales. And then I've still, like I had a steady one to two, to three orders a day in print. Um, I don't advertise um, and I have, I know you don't teach this, uh, but I do have a website just because I have so much on my plate right now. I have six kids, I homeschool, 
I work. So I have a website to kind of take a little bit of that off of me. And yeah. I have people who will order from my website and it'll just pop up on my phone. It's like, oh, look, I just made 150 bucks. So um, I'm not complaining about that. I quite like that, actually. <laughs> but yeah, this month has, has definitely been my biggest month so far. And I think I've crossed the, let's see, I think I'm almost at seven thousand dollars for this month um that's which crazy it's it's crazy for me considering um i don't do this full time uh i've got a lot of kids so <laughs> <laughs> um this is a it's part time for me and the goal is to get solidified in this enough that in a year or two i can do this full time and my husband can stay home with the kids. So. Yeah. But you're on your way to it, going from just not even a year yet, from making one sale for 100 bucks a month to now 7000 in a month. Yeah. In, yeah. It's, what, it's 10 months or so. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because <laughs> I'll talk to my husband. I'm like, ugh, I only made like $150 this week. He's like, do you remember like a year ago <laughs> when you were like, oh my gosh, I made 50 bucks. So it's, it's kind of a mentality change where I'm like, oh, I haven't sold this piece yet and I'm almost finished with it. I don't understand what's wrong. <laughs> so it's, it's definitely a change. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's pretty amazing. Now, so now I don't want to act after going through everything. So from not making sales, going through the entire program and working with me to now making sales, what would you say was the, what was the biggest thing for you to overcome? Myself, um, I'm super critical of my own work and don't think it's worth what it's worth. Um, I would sit there and look at my work and I'm like, there is no way someone's gonna pay even a hundred dollars, it's a piece of paper with colored pencil on it. But I mean, I do put a lot of work into everything. I put about 40 hours into a portrait. Um, but in my mind, I was like, there's no way someone's gonna want that enough that they'll pay me what it's worth. Um, so that was my that was my biggest thing is I was not good at pricing. I was not good at determining my own value. And I was severely undervaluing um, my work and and it's been proven time and time again like hey <laughs> your work is worth this people have purchased so many pieces and then I've had the actual subjects of my artwork um, reach out to me with interest uh, I've gotten to meet a couple of them and um, I've never in my life thought I would you know just casually have a Twitter conversation with Hulk Hogan or uh, write a letter to Patrick Mahomes' mom and her get a print of mine and her send me something or like, I never thought any of that would happen. Um, but it, it's really cool that, and for me, it's even, even better when it's their parent that reaches out to you because some would be like, oh yeah, that looks like me, that's cool. But if a parent's like, that looks like my kid, that's, that's my goal. Like I want a parent to be like, I like that enough that I want it because that's my kid. <laughs> so yeah, that yeah. might be the mom in me, but. <laughs> yeah, but, and yeah. at this point, you don't have to say any names, but at this point you didn't drew for a few celebrities, whether that's sports players or just other celebrities. Mm -hmm. You know, whether, whether that's their parents or for them themselves. At this point, how many would you say you probably have created artwork for? Um, I think six. Um, I've directly given work to or done work for um, six celebrities or their parents. Um, but then I'm also currently talking with another one who is interested in potentially partnering with me um, 
for my artwork, um, for them to, for us to partner together so they would sign it and I would draw it and then it would be sold. Um, yeah. And um, while I don't think I need uh, that kind of thing, it doesn't hurt when you're being endorsed by a celebrity so more people can see it. Um, that doesn't hurt at all. But then I'm also, I've also had conversations with a, a couple organizations who are potentially interested in um, hiring me as an artist for their organization um, without me even applying which is kind of cool. Um, I've talked to a museum that's interested in a piece uh, to put in their traveling collection. So it's it's not just like my local people can see my work and they recognize me now. It's the, the museums in Canada. So that's I mean, they found me online and they liked my work enough to say, hey, we would like for you to contribute a piece. Um, but it's not just like my local people who are interested in talking to me. I've had people, I, I mainly focus on Kansas City teams, um, but people are like, hey, it'd be really cool if you drew a Raiders person or <laughs> it'd be really cool if you uh, decided to switch teams and draw some Steelers. Um, but and I'll, I'll occasionally, you know, indulge them and draw someone. But I like the Kansas City area. So, <laughs> but I've sold yeah. work. I've sold works to people in uh, Macedonia and Sweden and Denmark and Germany and the UK and um, it's been crazy just. And all of that I attribute to you, by the way, because there's no way I would have known how to talk to people or where to go to talk to people or how to put my work out there if I hadn't have first worked with you because I had no idea what I was doing. I could draw it, <laughs> but I couldn't actually get it in front of anybody worthwhile. So, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. So, after everything you learned from me, one thing I like to ask. Is what would you say is your favorite part? Uh, I don't know. Just being able to converse with people. Like, I had no idea how to talk to people when it came to my artwork. And you, like, almost verbatim taught me. I was like, okay, they said this. And you're like, okay, well, then say this back. <laughs> Oh, that makes sense, I suppose, because <laughs> I'm not good at conversation. But yeah, it's I I can now talk to people and like I don't I don't need your help anymore to talk to people. I can someone says something to me and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm sure I'd said to say this at one point. So I'm just gonna say <laughs> it. <laughs> a lot of my a lot of my conversations look the same on my end, but um they don't know that because they haven't had the conversation before. Right. So it works. Um, but I think that's my favorite part is being able to know how to talk to someone when someone says something and not just sit there like, uh, thanks. I think <laughs> that's basically <laughs> what I did before. And that's literally what everyone says. Everyone says they love the actual conversation, like learning the actual script and stuff and how to have those conversations to just not just build a relationship but at the end of the day make sure it lead to the actual sale mm -hmm. so yeah and it's definitely helped because a lot of the times the people that i i've had those conversations with um like i feel like i know those people now like a lot of the times i'll friend people on facebook or they'll follow me on twitter or i'll follow them on twitter um and they're in my newsfeed and in my timeline all the time and they continue to talk to me and I talk to them and um they're like oh I see that you're gonna have a new piece they'll like send me a message I, I see that you're gonna have a new piece and I definitely want a print of it so write down my name on your on your order list because I already want it or 
um, just things like that. And it's it's cool because I don't know, like they have a connection with my artwork and it makes them feel like they've got a connection with me now. Um, I've actually once or twice run into someone in a store and they're like, oh my goodness, hey, hey, I'm like, oh, <laughs> hi. And they're like, do you, do you draw like Chiefs players? I was like, uh, yeah. They're like, I'm friends with you on Facebook and I follow you. And I was like, I'm sorry, unless I see your profile picture, I'm probably not going to know who you are. <laughs> but it's, it's been interesting. Like people recognize me out in public because of my work and stuff. So it's, it's yeah, cool. That's amazing. <laughs> 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 There's a lot, a lot have happened in those last ten months or so. Yes, a lot of incredibly magnificent things that I did not believe. Like you, you told me every single one of these things would happen, and I was like, "That's best case scenario." And I know that I'm not even doing as well as a lot of the other artists that you've worked with. Like I, I still talk to some of the other artists if they're doing even better than I am, and I'm just like. I think your best case scenario, I'm just like, this is pretty great for me though. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with where I'm at. Yeah. I remember we used to always, I used to like, as we used to work together, every day I used to say, I remember we used to always be like, yeah, that's best case scenario and worst case. I'm like, don't even think about worst case. This is what's <laughs> going to happen. And you're like, yeah, we, we're going to see. <laughs> <laughs> You were always like, and then I'd be like, hey, guess what? This worked. And you're like, so how are those trust issues? <laughs> They're still there, but I'm, I trust you more. But, you know. Yeah, I'm so that's cool. So. <laughs> now, next I want to ask, so the last two things. First thing first, as you know, I'm very big on setting goals. So if you used to set a goal for 2021 after everything you accomplished going into the end of 2019 and now 2020 financially what would that goal be and it could be like a monthly goal or a yearly goal if you had to come up with that goal now my goal is to be able to make the same amount that my husband makes at his job and that's the goal that i've already set for. that's the next goal that i want to reach um this month i've and last month, I surpassed him in monthly earnings. Um, but my goal is to make more than him every month. Um, and then if I can consistently do that, then he'll get to stay home and I will just get to draw and he will get to homeschool the rest of the kids. <laughs> so. And that's the ultimate goal. That's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal. Well, the ultimate goal is um, I would like to work for an NFL team. Um, and I know as an artist, most artists are like, yeah, I want my own gallery or I want. But I focus on on sports because I like sports. Um, and I draw the players I draw because I like the players. And I would really, really like to at least work for the team and then continue to do my own thing on the side because that's that's a dream of mine. I just, you know, want to be part of the Chiefs team. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, which is pretty cool. So mm -hmm. now come to the last question I want to ask. If you had to give advice, let's just say as far as your advice to just all the Caitlin's out there that that's not having a success so far, you know, just the artists out there who want to be successful, what would your word of advice be for them? Okay, and this is going to sound completely corny, but this actually happened a couple days ago. I had someone reach out to me and they're like, hey, my friend is an artist and I see how well you're doing and they want to be out there. And I was like, um, you should look up Troy Henry because he can he can help you get to where I'm at because I wouldn't be where I'm at without him. Um, I've talked to quite a few of the people who I think ended up working with you. And I, I'm actually friends with several of them on Facebook. 
and they'll be like, hey, we're learning this in, in class right now, and what is your advice for what I should do? And I'm like, <laughs> we didn't actually do that when I worked with Droid. That's a little different, um, but I'll help you if you want. But that has actually been the advice that I've given um, several artists. They're like, hey, this is, this is what I'm trying to do, um, and you're where I want to be. Uh, which is crazy for me because like a bunch of artists reach out to me and ask me, hey, how did you get there? Or some things like, how do you do that technique? Or like they look at me like I'm like the artist that I look up to. <laughs> um, but all of my advice, if it's about, hey, I want to financially be where you're at, I've been, hey, uh, you should definitely look up Geroid Henry. Um, and I'll like point them in the direction of your website. So, um, and I've had several people who are like, hey, I'm scheduled with a call for him now. So, so that's exciting. <laughs> but that, that's usually my advice. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we come into the end, for those who want to check out your work, right? Mm -hmm and just find you online, where can they find you at? Um, most of the time I'm on Twitter. I don't think that's one that you teach, and you didn't teach me that, but you taught me Facebook, and I applied everything that you taught me to Twitter, and it completely works on every social media. So um, <laughs> most of the time I'm on Twitter, and um, I'm at Caitlin Snelling Art, I think that's a good question. I have like three, I have, I have three usernames. I'm pretty sure. I'm sorry. This one's at art by Caitlin. Um, Caitlin Snelling art is my website. Uh, I'm at art by Caitlin or Facebook. I'm just sports art by Caitlin Snelling. Um, and you can check out my work there. Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tag the links to your website, Twitter, as oh. well as your Facebook and even your Instagram. Um, so everyone could check you out that want to check out your work because you're crazy talented, especially <laughs> your, your sports drawings. I remember I literally seeing, I was just scrolling. I don't know how I came across it. I was just scrolling on Instagram a few days ago and I came across your work and I was like, and that's not saying you're a I'm like, you, your work improved so much. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah, I'm yeah, trying to just get better with each piece. Yeah, and it's really cool because, like, I've drawn some people or I'll tag, I'll tag, like, Chris Jones. I tagged him in something, and now he follows me. And a lot of the times he'll, like, like all my art. I'm like, that's really cool. Like, Chris <laughs> Jones liked that piece. Um, which, I mean, he's he's a person, um, just like anyone else. But he's uh, well, also one of the subjects of my drawings. So, uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's pretty it's cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I do want to, I know you get pretty busy, Caitlin. So, I do just want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to hop on this interview with me. And I'm pretty sure everyone that's going to see this is really going to appreciate it. You know, because there are a lot of artists out there that are just trying to figure out what to do, you know, to start making those sales. Definitely. And, and if they, have any questions they're more than welcome to reach out to me have any questions about working with you whatever they're i try and answer everyone who reaches out to me i get a lot of questions on instagram and facebook so um if they have any questions that this didn't answer um i'd be happy to to help them out <laughs> <laughs> yeah i appreciate that so we're going to end a training here for those who want to find caitlin the link will be below and yeah, so thank you again, Kate. You're very welcome. <laughs>